by humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honour and life. My name's Arthur and I thank you for joining me as we share a few thoughts from Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 4. What is the key to life? Sometimes we seek after the wrong thing. And so this proverb is putting it into perspective for us. We would like riches. We would like to be honoured rather than dishonoured. We would like a long life rather than to have our life cut short. But we should not pursue those things. Those things flow from other things. They are outcomes, not goals. And those other things are humility and the fear of the Lord. Because life is extremely complicated. This world in which we live is incredibly sophisticated. And the one who understands it all is the Lord. He understands the biology, but he also understands the sociology. He understands economics. And the key to success in life is not to promote yourself, but rather to choose humility, submitting yourself to others and submitting yourself to God in particular. As James says, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God and he will lift you up. And many verses in the book of Proverbs talk about the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Wisdom is that ability to make right choices so that you end up in the most propitious circumstances. We know that in the world there are those who are rich and those who are poor. But money doesn't measure the intrinsic worth of any being. We recognise that some people are honoured, but so quickly that honour can be taken away when they do something that is wrong. Some people live long lives, but others have their lives cut short sometimes as a consequence of their own actions, sometimes as a consequence of the actions of others. The point is that none of us knows the length of our lives. None of us can add to our height or add to our number of days. We have a certain number of days allocated to us, but we do not know what that is. We are in a particular set of circumstances. Some people are extremely rich, Some people are incredibly poor. And as time goes on, barring levelling events like wars and tsunamis and earthquakes and things like that, the rich get richer and the poor get poorer because the rich get rich at the expense of the poor. A person who is rich tends to assume that they have the right to things and become proud. Those who are poor they can become jealous. Well, our proverb is saying, by humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honour and life. How does this work? When we come to humility, the scriptures point us first to Moses, who was honoured through the scriptures, but that he was the meekest man on earth. He was a humble man. He didn't promote himself. He was raised as a prince of Egypt, but it wasn't his doing. His parents put him in the basket by the river at the time when Pharaoh had given instructions that all the baby Hebrew boys should be thrown into the river and drowned. And the princess rescued him. The princess of Egypt protected him. And so he was raised as a prince in Egypt, but he didn't lord it over the other princes. He didn't consider himself great. He remained humble. As such, he was a very reluctant leader of Israel, leading them out of Egypt, only because the Lord God insisted he do so. But of course, the great example of humility is the humility of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are told that he is the Son of God. He was with the Father before the world was, All things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. He was born king of the Jews. But he didn't go parading around 
as a king or as a prince, demanding others serve him. Rather, he says, he came to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. And so he humbled himself, even though he was equal with God in his internal being. Yet in his service he humbled himself and was obedient to death, even death of the cross. We're inclined to think that when the pressure's on, we must save our lives before saving others. But Jesus forfeited his life as the good shepherd laid down his life for the sheep. Now we would think, well, the shepherd's life is more important than the sheep's life. There's lots of sheep. There's only one shepherd. But no, the shepherd laid down his life for the sheep. That is humility. That is looking to the needs of others ahead of your own needs. Humility is linked in our proverb with the fear of the Lord. The Lord Jesus always did those things that please the Father. It's not fear in the sense that you're frightened of, although indeed we should be frightened of God in the sense that his power is immense. And so he does what he pleases, just as we're frightened of electricity if it's not contained. So the Lord is powerful and we need to have that respect for him. And he can take our lives in a moment. He is the one who can raise us up and he is the one who can put us down. And he chooses to bless those who honour him and honour his people. And he has articulated this very carefully when he said to Abraham, those who bless you, I will bless. Those who curse you, I will curse. So by humility and fear of the Lord are riches and honour and life. King David did not exalt himself, but he was exalted because of his fear of the Lord, his humility before God, and God protected him through many difficulties in life. We're not told that we will be excused the challenges of life, but the things that we face are the same kinds of things that everyone faces. There's great diversity of circumstances. But God still provides for people in this world. But the bottom line is that if we put God first, then he will lead us in paths of righteousness. And if we honour him, he will honour us. Jesus specifically said that. If you confess me before men... I will confess you before my Father and before the angels. But if you deny me before men, then I will deny you before the Father and the angels. So our proverb, by humility and the fear of the Lord, we will gain honour and riches and eternal life. Earthly riches we must leave behind and earthly honour we will leave behind. We can put our treasure in heaven and the honour that really counts is to be honoured by God. Well done, good and faithful servant. And to receive a crown of life which those receive who love is appearing. So humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God and he will lift you up. He gives us richly all things to enjoy. Humility and the fear of the Lord is encapsulated in godliness that Paul speaks extensively about, writing to Timothy. And he says, bodily exercise profits a little, but godliness is profitable for all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. The Proverbs and other scriptures point out that if we pursue godliness, humility and the fear of the Lord, We will be richer, we will receive more honour and our natural life will generally be longer than if we do not take that path. Now godliness with contentment is great gain for we brought nothing into this world and it is certain that we will take nothing with us when we die. And so having food and clothing with these we shall be content.